See if you can guess what that is just from the tip of the tail. It's saying hello to us for the first time after being asleep for many, many weeks. Have a look at that. One of our dragons. Look at those claws, body, just sunning himself. A beautiful white-throated monitor. Just come out of a slumber, warming up. Spent a winter in, not in a, a type of hibernation, but in a in a much reduced state of, 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 uh, of consciousness, almost unconscious. And he's now just climbed out in this late afternoon to metabolize a little bit of the energy that he would have stored up last year. And just have a look at his tail, the base of his tail. And his back was where he would have stored all the fat. And you can see how skinny that tail is. You can see how it's got this dip. That is where the fat reserves we're being built up and by the end of summer hopefully you'll have a nice fat tail again and a nice broad back you can see that skin line there that's he can fill that entire fold of skin literally and needs to in the days of summer and he will do that overpowering and eating absolutely anything they can from snakes to birds eggs insects termites if they were a little bit bigger, humans, Land Rovers, small buildings, fire engines, and Boeing 747s. I'm sure these guys think they can tackle it all. And they do so by running after their prey, overpowering it with just sheer strength and bite force and those massive claws. Just had enough holding on with his fingernails and he's now just climbing up onto a branch probably just to rest out a little bit yeah, his face is peeling he's peering over the edge look at that tongue testing everything with that tongue tongue is very long quite sticky and forked and the reason why it's forked is in the roof of this lizard's mouth basically underneath that white spot that you have uh, that he has just by his, his eye are two pits and so this, the, the tongue comes out, waves in the air, picks up scent particles, will then go back into the mouth, and then he flicks it forward, and the two tips of his tongue then go into the holes in the roof of his mouth, and he wipes off the glands very in a, in a pit that's jam-packed with sensory organelle. He's now going back into his hibernation hole, where he came from, you'll see him disappear in there now, being very careful, he doesn't want to fall. He's using those very viciously hooked claws. And let's see if he goes in there. Just an absolutely fantastic sighting of this white-throated monitor. You can have a look at their hands, his hands, or his four legs, four claws. You can see those claws that are very long exceptional sense of smell can smell rot he won't, he's not he's not outside of the possibilities of scavenging off a carcass using sense of smell and his eyesight to catch and locate prey very very strong animals you can pick them up he's, he's a he's a large animal is he's, he's, he's Africa's third let's say is the second largest lizard um, because the water monitor gets slightly longer and one of the world's largest lizards um, with the Komodo dragon being the world's largest at probably three to four times his length and easily, I don't know, 50 times his size. Komodo dragons are just something else entirely. That camouflage resting up against the tree. Wow, expat, you've just sent through a comment saying you watched one on the Juma cam once digging up terrapin eggs. That's fantastic. I've never seen anything like it. I know they do eat eggs. They've got a big fondness for eggs, but having seen that and witnessed that, that's very special. I, never in all the thousands of hours I've been out in the bush have I been lucky enough to see that. So hope that's one for the memory banks. Oh, he's just fantastic. 
Oh, Beard, you've just asked me how many species, well, firstly, hello, and secondly, uh, you just asked me how many species of monitor lizard we have in the country. We've got two. We've got the water monitor, or the Nile monitor, as it's sometimes called, and then we've got the rock monitor, or the white-throated monitor, as this one is called. Those are the only two that we have in the country, with this one being the more terrestrial one, and the, the rock monitor being the more amphibious one. Um, you find these monitor lizards all over the bushveld. They're a fairly common bushveld lizard. You don't always see them, but they are a fairly common bushveld lizard. And this fair, see if he's, oh, you can just see his claws there on his back foot holding on there. Hey, look at that claw just holding on. One of the favorite foods of a martial eagle is this guy and there are there's lots of footage on YouTube where the teeth and claws of these monitor lizards are pitted against the bills and claws of the of the martial eagle and you can go and have a look at how many titanic battles between these dragons and martial eagles have been filmed over the years. I've seen a martial eagle be dragged across the road by one of these guys before. Incredibly strong. That's his ear hole that you can see there behind his, his eye. Fairly large with no external ear flaps. Definitely no family of mine then. And just once again, I just have to remark on those five-fingered claws just wickedly tipped with those claws. Just a fantastic sighting of this monitor lizard. Really has to be one of the best sightings. Kathy, you're absolutely right. I'm also going to join you in that statement. You go, you, you've just said that you're going to enjoy spring with all these creatures that arrive, and that is 100% why I enjoy summer so much. It's just the diversity here is just so fantastic. You got from these dragons all the way through to the most minute, interesting insect. And all the flowers and all the birds come back and all the vibrancy in the plants the clouds that build up in the sky. I really am looking forward to summer again, I must be honest with you. But then, you know, when we're in summer and we're battling with the heat and you've sweated for four weeks non-stop, then you also miss these massive blue skies and the chillier weather. Let's see if we can go forward a little bit. I suppose that's just the nature of humans, never to be completely satisfied, hey? Now, we're not particularly sneaky in a two ton Land Rover, but let's just see what, what we can get right here. Let's see if we can show you his nest. RJ, oh, you've just asked me if these lizards shed like snakes. They absolutely do. They are cold-blooded and they will outgrow their old skin and shed it off. It doesn't come off quite as neatly as a snake. They slough it off and then they rub it. Have a look at his. Obviously very comfortable with us now. That blunt nose, another diagnostic feature of this particular species. And those scales all over his body. If we're very careful, we might even be able to see a parasite or two. Have a look at that eye. Oh, and he's got an injury on his head and missing some scales. You can actually see us in his eyeball, that pair of white shorts that you're looking at is on Bebop's legs. <laughs> and you can even see our aerial. That is amazing. He's had enough of being a point of discussion at the moment. He's going back around to the other side of the tree. That's the hole he came out of. Look at those claws there, turning around. I 
So Dina, you said that you don't really know anything about monitor lizards, and please excuse me, I, I haven't furnished any anything except the most common. They do have a, well, the Komodo dragons have a venomous saliva. The rock monitors do not, but they've got an incredibly hard bite. Um, they overpower their prey, which includes anything. Anything that they can catch and kill, they will do so. They use their claws, which you can see there, I mean, that is just something out of a horror movie. To grab and dig with, they don't kill with their claws, they just hold tight. And then the power comes from the bite, and then they shake the prey with their head. They'll thrash it from side to side, usually dismembering whatever they've got. Swallowing it whole, they will eat near anything. They mate once a year, they lay eggs in in the sides of termite mounds or at the bases of trees and those eggs incubate for an entire year and then they hatch with the first spring rains as the the rains soften the, the soil and the length of day is longer they will come out and will immediately begin hunting no parental care whatsoever once this female or male has done their their job of laying eggs or in or uh, Oh, forgotten the word now. Made the lady lizard pregnant. <laughs> Jeez, my brain is being fried by the sun over here and I've lost my ability to communicate in the English language. You can see that the gape is fairly wide, got quite a wide opening mouth and no fangs, just the serrated teeth. He's heard something, seen something. Let's see if it's not a martial eagle. No, not a martial eagle. He would be very wary of being, being caught in the open. I have seen leopard catch and kill these monitor lizards. I haven't seen lion do it. In actual fact, Mvula was the last, the last um, leopard I saw catch one of these monitor lizards last season. Other than that, they really are dragons. I mean, if you were the size of a mouse or a rat and this dragon came upon you, there is much to be feared. Look at that ant he's allowed crawling on his head. Oh. Let's see if we can spot any parasites in his ear opening. Yes, there's one or two ticks in there, I can see. Am I wrong? Is it just because I want to see it? Look at all those scales as well. Just massive scales. Gee whiz. This is the closest I've ever been to a monitor lizard. It is an incredible sighting. There's his nose. Very acute sense of smell, but he'd use his tongue and look at those claws. Oh, imagine this thing was the size of a null crocodile. Wouldn't be that many humans on the planet, that's for sure. And there's very powerful forelegs. They use their legs for digging, primarily. And the muscle fibers that you have inside the, the inside reptiles are much more densely packed than what mammalian muscle fibers are and so it gives them an incredibly hard or inc incredibly powerful ability. Their, their, their musculature is incredibly powerful. He has his back legs stretched out there to his pelvis and then his tail. He's skinny. You can see how much, how much skin he's actually got. And then they've got this short stubby tail as well, not a very long one, with those keeled scales. That's what the... When we're talking about a snake that can climb a tree uh, easily and we talk about keeled scales that is a keeled scale that you're looking at on the tail there his back leg is stretched out hooking on the branch with the claws and then look at all those wrinkles that he's got in his belly and his back there on the tummy that's to facilitate growth so they can bolt food down and really they can do a lot of food in one sitting easily devour a complete clutch of eggs. Let's see where he goes up the tree now. See if his tongue comes out again. They've got the most unbelievable tongue. Very, very, very nice. Now, you asked if it was dangerous to humans. It's not really dangerous to humans, although they can curl their tail, and I've, I've had one lash out at me before. They curl their tail in a characteristic S, 
and they whip it out at you and it can knock you, it can knock you i mean it's not it's not that sore to be honest it just gives you more of a fright and then they can use their claws to rake you if you catch one and then they bite as well they've got a very very strong bite i have a fond memory of sticking a stick into a hole that had one in and he bit the end of the stick and i couldn't even turn or rotate the stick um can you believe it a bite there that'll easily take off your finger or do you some damage at least uh, at all do we utilize them in any way absolutely they have been used uh, as food for people you can eat their flesh um, it tastes a bit like chicken but then i think anything tastes like chicken if you don't want to really think about it but it is a white fatty meat And just have a look at that. Faro, you're 100% right. These close-ups on this new camera that we've got is just unbelievable. We were just commenting on it now. The amount of things that we can show you with this particular camera is just wonderful. I have to say thank you to everybody that helped make the purchase of this possible. It's just opening up such a massive new world to everyone. Have a look at the way his scales behind his head are very different to the scales on top of his head. I, I have no idea why. I don't see enough of these guys or know enough about herpetology to actually tell you anything more than I have, really. Oh, I do know that they've got a pineal eye. That I can tell you. Most reptiles, especially ones this, this, uh, this large, have got a third eye. It's located in the top of the head. There's an indent just at the back of his skull. Let's see if he'll allow us to see it again, giving us the stare over his shoulder. And you'll see on top of his skull there's a slight indent. That is a very thin portion of the skull. And there's just below the skin, through a very thin piece of bone, there's a third eye that is light sensitive. And they use that third eye to judge light intensity and length of day. So it can actually... see not well I mean it doesn't see patterns or anything like that but lizards have got a third eye in the middle of their head I just found that a fantastic fact so pineal eye that the monitor has used to judge light intensity and length of day he's just tolerating us here they're very good swimmers they use their tail you can see his tails actually flattened dorso ventrally which means that it's squashed on the side. So you'll see there it's round, but as you go up to the swimming part of it, it becomes squashed top to bottom, well, squashed in the sides, and they'll swish that from side to side. They swim incredibly well. There is all the fatty deposits. That's where it was stored, and in his back, just in front of his hip, there is where he stores lots of fat over the course of the summer, feeding pretty much non-stop. They're cold-blooded, so they operate within a range of temperatures. Too hot, they die. Too cold, they die. Uh, just right, although they don't have a set body temperature like we do. We've got a set body temperature of 37 degrees centigrade. Two degrees up, we run the risk of overheat and dying, and two degrees down, and we also risk the same. Most reptiles can do a couple of dozen degrees, 10 degrees or so, up or down. Let's have a look at the ease. He's just scaling this marula tree vertically. Very camouflaged against the bark. As I said, the martial eagle is his main predator and then also um, honey badger will also catch and eat him. I'd love to see a fight between a honey badger and a, and a large monitor. I mean if he can give a martial eagle uh, run for his money. Imagine what a honey badger is gonna both of them being probably the most stubborn of all African carnivores. This one and a honey badger. Just look at now we've got a, such a view of that forearm on the right hand side. Just have a look at all that muscle holding that hand together. He 
give Popeye a run for his money with those huge forearms. <laughs> well, Pop Popeye forearm. I don't even know if those cartoons play anymore. All right. So I think we 